Hey guys, welcome back to Chickadee Farm. I'm Karina and today we are in a new part of the house. This is our, well, I keep calling it the pantry, but it confuses David because we also have a pantry upstairs. So we're going back and forth between preservation room and root cellar, but it's not, it's really not a root cellar at all. It's actually our like machine room. It has our, our furnace and our hot water heaters and all of that jazz but it just so happens to be quite large and a perfect spot to have uh, my pantry, like my canning pantry. And we also, you might've seen, I have my freeze dryer down here and the dehydrator. And well, let me actually just give you a quick tour. So freeze dryer, dehydrator, and then these shelves were my grow station this spring and will be again next year so it has many purposes it also is storage for like christmas decorations and random stuff but today we are down here because we had a water issue um our ac had gotten clogged so it had there was water all on the floor down here so david had to tear out those shelves which meant we had to take everything that was on those shelves off. And now all of that is sitting out here in the basement and all needs to get put back. So I thought it would be a good idea to actually put it back with some kind of plan in mind. When I first put everything on there, it was all just kind of willy nilly. I mean, like the pickles were kind of together and the jams were kind of together, but I want it to be a little more well thought out, like the stuff that we use most often on the shelves that are more, you know, eye level, that sort of thing. So that's my plan for today. But I also want to get the little front faces of these shelves um, painted with the stuff, this right here, with um, chalkboard paint so that I can label it and it will be really obvious to anybody that walks in here what is here and oh I just want to I should also say David actually built these shelves for me this was just blank space when we moved in so I'm very very grateful lighting is not great but he built all of these shelves and those ones back there as well so I use the back ones for more like just empty jars and my juicers back there canning lids vinegar down at the bottom that sort of stuff. So time to get it organized, but first we are going to get these faces painted. All right, I think that's all the explanation that you need. I'm gonna get started. First, I'm gonna get some stuff put away. Well, this is just for me while I'm down here working. And, but I've got some like jars and vinegar and lids and stuff from my last canning job. So I'm going to get these put away really quick first. Have enough of this chalkboard paint but I'm kind of feeling now like I won't because I only got two bottles of it but we'll just get started and see how far we get. I'm already making a mess and I'm thinking that I should have something a little bit wider than that mouth to pour it into to be able to get the brush in. So I'm gonna go find something for that. I'm not super worried about dripping on the floor, but I did get some paper to put down and put this underneath my little container, which is, I just got a little, what is this, quarter pint jar that I believe I've already put paint in from other projects and some cloth to wipe things up. Now I think we're ready. Oops. 
actually have never used blackboard paint before. This goes on really easily. It's really pretty cool down here, but I don't know, either it's warmer or painting is hot. <laughs> this uh, paint is going on super easy and goes a really long ways, so I actually might be just fine with the amount that I have. Alright, I have most of it done, just the most, uh, ends of those two shelves up there. And I'm thinking, I mean, it looks like it's gone on really well, but I haven't even used half of one of the bottles of paint. So I'm thinking maybe I should just do two coats while I'm here, have the paint, the jars aren't on here. I don't know if it would make any difference. Well, I'll do a second coat right here, see, let it dry while I'm finishing up down there and see if it makes a difference and then decide. Second coat on that little chunk right there. Now I will go finish the other two races. I am by no means a perfectionist, I, as you will see. Well, maybe you won't, but <laughs> I am trying to not hit these um, or other, like the ends of the shelves where the furnace is. I don't want it on the furnace. So I'm trying to be a somewhat careful in these areas without having actually tape. like one of them down there. I was also careful, like I just did, to not hit it. And then I went whoosh, whoosh, and I hit the side of it. So, yeah. And I'm just gonna leave it. Cause it's a pantry. <laughs> but no one but me, well, okay, you guys will see it too. I feel like you'll forgive some painting mistakes. Have it all painted with one coat. Yep, bottom one, all the way down. So that last bit of painting didn't take me long, so I haven't. This is not dry yet. As soon as it's dry, um, I will see if it really looks much different to have a second coat, and maybe do a second coat. But in the meantime, I now need to figure out where I want jars to go and how much space I need for what I'm intending to 
process this year, can this year, and then start putting things back on the shelves. Although if I'm gonna repaint a second coat, I will wait until to put the jars back on until I've done that. But I do need to figure out shelves. So let's do that now. My plan right now, well, I have the six shelves that I have. And the shelves are 120 feet long, or I'm sorry, 10 feet long, 120 inches long, six shelves. And for the most part, I'm going to be putting pints on them. And my pints, wide, both wide and narrow mouth, are all three inches on the bottom. So, and I can fit two deep. So per shelf, I can put 80 pints, yeah, 80 pints per shelf. I do have quartz, like all of my dill pickles are in quartz. So those are three and a half inches. I haven't figured out how many that means I can get on. Something less than 80. <laughs> um, I also know what I am planning to can for tomatoes. I don't have plans to can anything else other than like small things here or there maybe. like. I've, I'm ending up getting quite a bit of strawberries, so I might do a really small batch of strawberry jam. But, so that just means I need to like leave room in my jam section for some more things here and there. Oh, and I probably will, I should write that down, probably will can some meat. So I wanna include that. I do have like broths and soups and that kind of stuff. And then I also have all of my freeze dried goods. Some of those are in half gallon jars, which are, I actually didn't measure them. So I'm guessing probably more like four and a half inches wide, but I think I'm just gonna use the entire top shelf for freeze dried, dried like herbs and stuff. And then all of everything that's in Mylar bags, I'm gonna put up there as well. And I think that should all easily fit. Okay. Now what I need to do though, is count all of these jars. So I know how many tomatoes I wanna do. I need to count all of these jars. The ones I have here, I actually have some upstairs too, which I maybe should bring down and include in my count. Well, I know how many there are, that's fine. So I'm gonna count all of these, get some numbers figured out, and then I'll come back and tell you my plan. Hopefully I'll have one. Well, I do just want to tell you about these trays. Actually, let me go get one that's empty so you can see it a little bit better. I discovered these um, when we moved the first time. So when we moved away from Seattle to the Oregon coast, um, I had a lot of canned goods, not this many, but I did have a lot of canned goods. And I was like, how am I gonna transport these and keep them safe? We were packing ourselves. So um, I found these on, what is that website called? All right, I just got an email from them. So let me see here and I already threw it away. Okay, it's Roots and Harvest is the company, rootsandharvest.com, I think. Is that what it is? No, stop that, I just wanna look at. Yes, rootsandharvest.com. And it's literally the only place you can get these. But they come in quart, which is, this is the quart size, pint, and they just started carrying half pint containers as well. It holds 12 in each of them. And basically you have a top and a bottom that look exactly the same. And they just, they're really, really sturdy. I mean, you can stand on these things I have used it as a stool um, and both moves. I've put all of my canned goods in them and I have not lost a single thing. So they're a little spendy, but if you need to move a large quantity of jars of food, definitely get these. And actually now the nice thing about them is uh, when I'm carrying stuff up and downstairs, like full jars back downstairs after processing them, 
Um, it's really nice. It's much better than like these boxes that the jars come in. I mean, they're nice and great, but they're not nearly as sturdy. So anyway, enough of my advertisement for Roots and Harvest, which I have zero affiliation with. <laughs> All right, let me get to counting. I figured out how many I have and how much room I would like to leave in each category for X for more that I might make. And I came up with a total of 24 quarts and 367 pints. That equals a total of 1,185 inches and I can fit two um, per front to back on the shelf, right? So basically I have double the shelf length. So divide the 1185 by 24, that gives me, I need 49.375 feet of shelf space and I have 50. So I couldn't have planned that any better. <laughs> and that actually only includes five shelves because that sixth shelf, um, Actually, yeah, so the sixth shelf is gonna be all the, the dried goods, freeze-dried freeze goods, and the seventh, the very top one, that's just gonna be for storage of like empty jars, because we don't need anybody crawling up there trying to get down heavy jars of pickles or whatever. And although David made the shelf strong enough to be able to hold the weight that they could hold if they were full of jars, we actually weighed them and like figured it out. Uh, I still don't think it's a great idea to have really heavy things that high up. So now I need to figure out where on the shelves I am putting these things. Yes, yeah, so this is my little sheet of <laughs> scribblings. Um, and I think I figured out that I can put 80 jars. Yeah, so 80 pints per shelf. I hate math, you guys. <laughs> this is why when I put these things on there the first time, I just threw them up there wherever they wanted to go. But okay, I'm making myself do this. So now I'm going to figure out where they're going to go on the shelves. And we'll be back with you when I have figured that out. Actually, you know what? Let's go check the uh, paint and see if we think I need to do a second coat on the rest. All right, so this is the difference and actually it is a pretty significant difference. I mean, you can even tell on the screen that this is just looks smoother. So I think, I think yes, that I need to do a second coat. All right, that lets me take a break from math. So I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I figured it out, I think. I, I'm, I'm doubtful that you can read this, um, but I think I have everything laid out where it will fit. So now I need to, I wanna vacuum the shelves cause they're, they all have a little bit of like dust and sawdust and stuff from David uninstalling and reinstalling them. So I wanna get those cleaned off. And then I'm trying to decide if I, I probably should write the name of the first one on the shelf, put it on, and then write the name of this next 
one that I'm putting on just in case this is all wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's the plan. All right, I'm going to go get the vacuum and get that cleaned up first. It's very tight quarters in here and the hand vacuum is buried in many boxes that I didn't want to dig through. So I'm going to use a dustpin and a little sweeper. I think, I think it'll do well enough, mostly. If I can get the dustbin in here, which I can't, okay. Well, hmm. the bonus is that there are slits in the middle of these. So, because it's, it's three boards in a row, so there's spaces in between. Oh, maybe I can get them this way though. Ah, there we go. All right, there wasn't very much, so that wasn't too bad. All right, I think you know it is time for us to start loading in jars. So, well, I'll actually show you two really quick. The, so like I said, the very top shelf here is just going to be, <coughs> excuse me, for empty jar storage mostly. And then the second shelf, as you can see, has all of my, so like this is calendula, chamomile, I kind of have this section is like tea type herbs and medicinal type herbs. And then all of these are more culinary type herbs. So basil and chives and dill and that sort of thing. I do need to push them all down because I am saying that half of the shelf is for um, the stuff that's in mylar bags from, so stuff that's been freeze dried, put into long-term storage in mylar bags. So I will use, hopefully I don't have more than a half a shelf worth of those. I don't think I do. And plus they can squish and, and get together. And I can also use that top shelf for my lot bags if I need to. But I prefer not to because like I would have to stand on a stool to see anything that's up there. Um, whereas this I can at least fairly easily reach it and turn it and look to see what it says. So I think I would end up not using things if they got put up there. Man, my hands are covered in paint. I also ended up getting it on my clothes. Oh well. All right, so let me, let me move all these guys first, get the Mylar bags up here, and then we'll start hauling that stuff back into the shelves. You gonna help my line? I'm not sure how helpful it would be. Actually need to still label a few things here. Yeah, okay, I, I thought that those would fit. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm already going wrong. <laughs> Also have some freeze-dried like foods like these cherries celery eggs some mango and something else out there mm. oh, cucumber so I'm gonna put them on the mylar shelf side of things and um, just hope it's enough Thanks. Oh, 
look at that. <laughs> Yay. So the funny thing is I have basil and parsley to last me for forever. Um, yeah, starting here. So all of these are parsley. There's one cilantro and then all of these are basil. So I, I mean, I act absolutely could go out and harvest more of both of those, but maybe I will. And like, I'll give them away or something because I hate to waste them. I mean, they're beautiful plants and they've done really, really well for me this year, obviously. But anyway, it all fits up there. And like I said, if I need more space for mylar bags, I can put them up there. Um, I just would prefer not to. All right, now the heavy lifting begins with all of the jars that are out here. Yeah, just to give you one more quick look at what that entails. <laughs> and I know there are definitely pantries out there that have way more than this, but um, it's a lot, especially for just two people. And I have mostly what I'm gonna be putting on the shelves beyond this are my tomato products, which I don't have any of except for the crushed tomatoes that I just did. Um, and that the tomato products I feel pretty confident will easily go through in a year. The pickles, 90% of them, 95% of them are from last year. I typically, a friend and I get together and we do a massive pickle preserving day or two days, actually last time it was. Um, and it lasts us two, sometimes even three years. Although by the, you know, middle of the third year, they're not, the pickles aren't so great. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, cause I think the last time we did it was in 2019 and then we did them last year. So it was almost three years, but anyway, so Pickles I won't do any more of. I don't plan to do any more salsas. We have plenty of broth and I actually just freeze dried a bunch of um, chicken broth. And I'm thinking that that might be the better idea rather than having liquid broth that's in jars all the time. I don't know, we'll see. I haven't used it yet, so I'm not sure how, how it will work. But, and then I definitely don't need more jams and jellies, although I imagine it's going to happen. <laughs> Like I said, I have strawberries. So anyway, um, yeah, Ugh, I don't even want to start this. Okay. Just, just gotta do it. Just power on. So I painted this little strip of the, um, blackboard paint right here because I want to test these markers that called Bistro Chalk Markers, and it was the closest thing to chalk I could find. And it's supposed to be um, good on whiteboards, lightboards, windows, windshields, other non-porous surfaces. But it doesn't actually say blackboard. However, this is paint, not actual like blackboard, blackboard. So I'm hoping that it works. Let's see. I might just be putting tape on it for now. Till I can find some chalk. Chalk. Meantime, I am going to go ahead and start at least bringing the pickles in because I know that they're going to take up pretty much the entire bottom row. So I will get started with those right now. Oh, did you find? This is my pen. found a bottle last one of said 2019 dills 
that it's gonna get tossed because it really is not good. <laughs> Is actually a small batch of sweet pickles that I did just three jars because my horrible terrible looking cucumber plants keep actually giving me cucumbers so I actually have a whole another batch but probably another three jars worth um, I think I might do those as dills though sorry I keep finding things I should tell you I want to tell you about you remember the um, spicy peppers that we just did? Well, we opened up the little bottle of them and they are delicious. So, I mean, they're pretty close to Mama Lil's, which is exciting. So I'm gonna be doing more of these too. We are almost done. Oh, look at that. Just a few more jars to go. Yay! Last ones until I can some more. Where was the crushed tomato going? I don't know, it's supposed to go on the very end. Et voila, all done. Well, until, like I said, I do more canning, which I plan to do more of tomorrow, actually. <laughs> Tomato products, which will be good. Oh, let's see how this went. Our little Mars here. Okay, so it doesn't work dry. Let me go get some water on this. All right, wet. Hmm. Well, it definitely left a mark. So I'm kind of thinking, kind of thinking I might wait. Let's see if you can see it in the, yeah, can you see, you can still see the mark there. So I don't really like that. So I think I'm going to wait until I can get some actual chalk chalk. And those things won't go to waste. I'll use them somewhere, as will all of the extra uh, chalk paint that I have. It is in my craft room to get put away with the rest of the paint. But let me give you a really quick pantry tour, which is kind of fun. We haven't done one of those. All right. You know what? I'm going to take my phone off of this thing so it's easier to see. All right, starting in the back where it's most difficult to see. <laughs> so again, we've got all of our herbs in alphabetical order here. I also have 
enough dill heads. I have these two, another quart jar and a half gallon jar, plus two things of dill weed, two pints of dill weed. Yeah, anyway, I have a lot of, a lot of herbs. And then this is the start of all of my medicinals and like tea type herbs. And then I've got some cherries here, some celery, some uh, sweet peas, and um, cucumber that have been freeze dried, as well as some eggs. And back there are, is some mango. And then I've got some freeze dried, Mm -mm. Oh, apricots. I've got two bags of freeze-dried apricots, one bag of freeze-dried tomatillos, and then one of eggs. And I actually have another thing of eggs to put into the freeze dryers as soon as they are frozen. Um, and then again, like I said, all of this is parsley, a cilantro, all of that is basil. And then down here, this is all of our jams and jellies. I definitely have some that are pretty old. Um, yeah, 2019. And actually, no, I guess that is the oldest. I thought I actually thought this one was the oldest, but that's 2020. So, um, this blueberry butter, I'm pretty sure it was 2021. This is why I actually label things. But, and then so the apricot jelly that we made this year this spring and the corn cob jelly and corn cob syrup we just made and then a bunch of apple butter I'm kind of these not only are they not labeled at all I know they're apple butter there's no date and I want to say they are probably uh, 2018 but they're still sealed so I mean maybe the taste won't be great when I open them but I'll just use them first try to use them first Maybe use them in like a bread or something, uh, like quick bread. Anyway, so more apple butter. And then these are all tomato jam, which I think that this is 2018. These three right here. Um, so again, they're all sealed. One good thing about doing this, having to take everything out and put it all back, is I literally got to check all of my seals on every single jar, which was great. Hadn't done it in a while. Anyway, um, so yeah, these, I don't know. I'm not how, sure how great they'll taste, but um, I have one in the fridge that I've been eating and it's been fine, so I guess. And then here, I've left room for some more jams just in case, I, because I have some peaches coming and I have that those strawberries in the freezer. And actually, the guy that I picked up the tomatoes from today, the farmer, who I got the corn from as well. Uh, he was like, so do you want some Concord grapes? Because we're not doing anything with them. So you can just go pick them. I was like, um, I don't, I don't know what I would do with grape juice. But David said he would enjoy having grape jelly. So when I go, I probably am going to go again end of this week or early next to pick up more tomatoes. So um, if the grapes are still good, I will grab some. Anyway, back to pantry. Okay, so some red salsa here, and then let's see, just one salsa verde from last year, and these are all the ones that we did this year. And then this empty shelf here will be where the majority of our tomato products go. So these are all the crushed tomatoes that I just did last week, and then some of them will go down here as well. And then I have some chicken soup, and these are all of my broths. So mostly chicken broth, and then um, we always do a prime rib for Christmas instead of a turkey. And this year I saved the bones and made some beef broth. We don't use very much beef broth, so honestly, I think this will probably last us until January again, easily. And then I have some smoked salmon down there. And the next shelf down, we have peach habanero hot sauce. And I've left room on this shelf. I'm hoping to do some more hot sauces. And then, oh, this is all the HP sauce. And then I have some very old, also 2019 mincemeat. Uh, again, it's sealed. So I will probably try and do something with it 
um, around Christmas, the holidays this year. But then I have some newer. And then I just can canned up this cranberry orange sauce, some applesauce from last year. And I hope to have, get more apples and make more applesauce and maybe some more cranberry sauce when cranberries come back in season. Then down here, oh, I, ha I tried an experiment, experiment with pickled apples. Yeah, uh, mm -mm. I have one up in the fridge and I'm not super impressed with it, but that's okay. <laughs> I don't know what I'll do with those two, but. Um, and then we have some bruschetta in a jar, which also I am not very impressed with. Um, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't taste anything. It tastes like cooked tomatoes and that's to me not what bruschetta is. So again, not sure what I'll do with this. Maybe figure out some kind of recipe that I can use it as an ingredient instead of as like a main thing that we're eating. And then corn relish from this year, still have a couple from last year. These are the dill relish that I did this year, and these are some sweet and spicy relish from a few years ago. It's still good, I have one of those jars up in the fridge as well. And these are all the dills that my friend Stacy and I did last year, along with bread and butter pickles. I have some very old peppers. <laughs> um, I'm sure they're probably pretty mushy. Well, actually, they actually seem to be holding up pretty good. So. And then this is the one that I just did to um, mimic Mama Will's. Oh, oh, and then the small batch of sweet pickles that I did and a couple of like cornichon dills. And then down there, I have lots of pickled beets. I don't remember what's supposed to go in here. Oh, more peppers, I'm hoping. I, I think that this is probably a <laughs> very optimistic hope for filling with peppers, but that's all right. And then of course back there, I didn't haven't done anything with this. I need to organize this a bit better still, but all the storage back there. And yeah, so that is it. We have, um, I do need to also do this storage space. Now I've got all of these things. These are what are gonna go up on that top shelf up there. Um, but yeah, like there's Christmas stuff back there and I don't know, carpet something, an air bed. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, that's, that will be for another day. Um, anyway, I'm actually pretty excited that I have this done. <laughs> I've been putting it off because I just didn't want to deal with moving, lugging all these jars back over here. But I'm feeling much better about the organization of it and where I'm going to put everything as it comes out of the kitchen. So it was a definite exercise that needed to happen and I'm very pleased with it. So I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed me watching me lug around jars and try and do math. <laughs> and uh, I hope you join me again next time. Everyone have a great day.